I've given you my slide, right? <coughs> I've please shared my slide. Yes. So you, I, I hope everyone has my slide on your phone because I've already sent to the group WhatsApp, uh, to the WhatsApp group. I've already shared. Just take the yes, I will yes, run please. Good morning, everybody. Okay, um we want to just do some practical aspect. And also, I would like to start with my story. In 2017, I came here not for summer school, but for the conference, DH conference. And I picked interest in um, DH via uh, Richard Aja. You know, he came to my university to lecture, and uh, I got interested. So he introduced me into DH. So when I come to DH, that is the following year, 2018, we were coached by Paige, Alex, Jill, and Daniel Otnell. And what, what were they doing to us? They were telling us, show, I mean, and of it, they were showing us the opportunities that we have in digital humanities. So I picked interest in digital literature because I'm into African literature. So I have to follow what will suit my discipline. Now, after that, one thing I want to tell you is that as we learn, you have to develop passion toward what you are doing. For a space of 218 to 220 to this year, I've received about four international awards because of my work in DH. UNESCO, UNESCO Janice Kochak gave me an award as a, 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 a prize for the Global South 2020. That is Janice Kochak. Uh, uh, award for South South, uh, Global South South. A robot that will be posting visual poetry. So we are not going to that first. But what I want to tell you is that I want to just ask you that whenever you come to conference, one thing that you have to do is that get connection. Collaborate. Collaborate with people. Collaborate with people. Make as much as you can to get connected. Alice connected me to Flores Leonardo, a professor in, a, in a Puerto Rico. So what was he doing? I saw his TEDx, uh, what do you call that? Uh, TEDx, right? TEDx talk. So he was talking about, I love e-poetry. And then because he worked and gathered data for the whole Caribbean and the whole uh, South American uh, poetry, electronic poetry. So when I met him, I said, I'm interested in electronic po poetry. Now, via Leonardo, I got to enter into an organization that he is the president. That is Electronic Literature Organization. It's a, it's, it's a global kind of organization in the whole five Africa, um, continent of the world. Now, when I get there, there is no, the only African that I met in the group 
that's from Africa is Kwabiana, very popular uh, 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 Ghanaian, Ghanaian scholar, and DH, and also electronic literature. But he only he stayed in that organization for only a few time and was not active again. So I'm, I, I became the first, uh, the, the first African to receive the award, the fellow as a research fellow in the organization. So what, what were they expecting from me? I told them when I was applied, because it's a competitive, very competitive kind of award. Only six in the whole world that they are giving. So I only, I just applied and told them what I want to do. They see that there is innovation. And they quickly gave me the award. And that's how I become a literary literature research fellow. Now, apart from this, we have to do one thing. This networking is very important and self-development. I don't know how to program. But if I show you the works I have done, you will never believe it that I don't know how to program. And how did I do that? Is that I have to develop a new way of approaching programming. And I have to name it what I call code manipulating composition. Code manipulation. Code manipulation uh, composition. So, here is the work, the first poetry. Excuse me, please. Can you just put us the slide for us? Okay. In 2019, I made my first publication of electronic literature. And it's through the help of Jim Andrews. Jim Andrews is a veteran Canadian digital poet. And then I told him that I want, I, I want to publish my poetry. It's okay. He will take me as a guest artist. So he took me as a guest artist and he published my works. How I wish we have slide, please, so that when I will be clicking, so that we have, we see practical how to read even digital poetry. It's not the same. The way you used to read uh, printed poetry. So, do not sleep, please. Do not sleep after this conference. Make sure you explore the place, the avenue of your interest. And that's what I, what I did. Digital humanity is so vast. Just choose the one. All these teachings that, or the, 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 the workshops we have attended, please, do not, to, do not try to grab all. Just take your area of interest and work on it. You can do digital humanity without doing even one coding. And, okay, next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, now, I wrote letter A Union African. Please, can you just, I, I will just only play Momenta. Just click Momenta for me, please. Yes. See Momenta there. Down. Yes. So that we'll see the example. I've already shared everything to everybody.
Momenta is inspired by the immigration and uh, of our youth towards Europe. And then people lost hope in Africa. And then you, we discovered that always we used to look down upon us. And, uh, you know, this reminds me in verse 33, where the Bible says that the age the We saw giants in the land of Israel. is not like textual the way we know it because there's what we call also visual poetry so this uh, electronic poetry is more of visual poetry and everything must rhyme with the text now if you say that if you say i am happy which means the text that you are going to animate should be jumping and showing something like you know when we are happy you are, you are not static how oh, you'll be so that is, that's how we do. Now, here, in two, last year, that, I mean, 2019, I, I submitted my, po my, po my, my digital poetry to, to Rivers, New Rivers Journal in the United States. And I named the work climatophosis, which is combination that's what we have as is a digital poetry expressed in French and English. It is inspired by the current climate change, climatic change, or climatic climate change. Now 
If you see here, in regard to coding, chromatophosis, uh, in regard to coding, it's created by manipulating HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript code of the expert on which website is codepen.io. I just go there, I creatively pick one code, and I just paste my text, my text into the code. When I, when I paste my text into the code, I, 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 I'm telling the truth that even the owner of the code, by the time I tweak the code and I remix, even the owner of the code will not say that this is his own code. Unless he read it very critically and he will say that this is my own. Now, this climatophosis last, last year appeared in the climate of change festival globally. And then last year, DH Awards 2020 that we just that they announced in March uh, uh, this year that climatophosis has won the best DH2, the use of DH2 for fun. Now I would like us to just look at this climatophosis. Let somebody click this one for me. This link. Click this link for me. Click from your end there. Let me. Now, go up again. Go up, please. Up. Okay. Click this. Climate of Change 2020 Festival. Uh, if you open it on your own browser, you will see all how I but inspire me. When you click on the, when you click here, picture, it will launch you to the poetry direct. And how do you read that kind of poetry? Because the text will be moving, dancing, and moving with the what? With the tide of the rising of the river, but the waters. In the, you see, you you see glaciers melting down and text is moving in the direction of the flow of the river and you see you you see the, the one global warming uh, kind of uh, features there so is it in french and english yes just click this center the picture there yeah Just click picture so that we can see. You can look or you can click on the picture. It will see.
is talking about COVID-19 and then the reaction of politicians. You see, Trump will come up and talk as if they are scientists. They'll tell us what, what is happening. Do you understand? You see, uh, uh, see uh, our come out, they will talk as if they are doctors. They will not allow experts to talk to us about COVID. Of it. You see that politician always come and be talking, talking, talking. So I that was. A, a by me, I have to talk, write a poetry about that. I show a text that the, the world is not stable. That's why I wrote in French and it say monde unstable. Now, when you click on this unstable, you see the text. A what? Either novel, either play, or poetry. It's computer that you will program, and they will be doing it. They do it and arrange it even more than human beings. Now, this text like this now, it will not stop unless you close the browser. You only read this. Only small line. Otherwise, you will not be able to read all. So you must be focused to read a line. Then you relax. For the one that will be bold for you to read the next. That's how to read it. And the reading will never finish because it's looping. There is what we call in programming loop. So, and that loop is what is making it to what? To, re to continue posting and writing. So today, I would like to encourage us. I am not a programmer. But I go and refresh people's code and tweak it. And just do, I told you what to do. There is a website that at the end of this, uh, my slide down, When I say it, 
com você. Oi. Poric Electronic Literature. It's my project of last year from September, and I completed gathering my data, data set in April. It took me seven months to get the data here. Now, and this data, and I, the works that I collected is from 1999 to 2021. And this database that will, from any moment from now, will be on air, will be on, a, on the website, on the internet. I collected 40 languages. Today, you don't need to go and learn any language in order to get to know, to read a text, if the text is on the internet. If I want to read Arabic, I will use Microsoft Edge, latest edition, and Chrome latest edge, latest, uh, latest uh, edition. What you do, you go up and open the text. An option will be, sometimes it's automatic, it will tell you, do you want to read this text in English? If your computer is programmed in English, if the language of your computer is English, then you say English. When, when you click on English, the whole website will just translate itself into, what, into English and you read it. And that's how I collected my work. I collected works in Arabic. I collected works in a, I am already bilingual or multilingual. So I collected work from Zosha and Zulu, Kiswahili, I think. And then Toga, Soto, Shona, and put them into my work. Are we, are we together? So there are 17 African local languages. I collected three and 327 works. Now, this is my project as a fellow of electronic literature. It's not funded. The stipend I collected from, as a fellow, is, is just small money. So it will not be able to run this uh, pro program. So, but I'm I'm passionate about it, and I got so many people that are interested to it, uh, interested in it, and then they started helping me. They started working with me, and that's why we have a new website that will be launched called AfricanElite.org. So all this work will be hosted there. Um. Then I have to create African Electronic Literature Alliance, which will help me to get all the artists, the researchers, and everybody to be with me, and we, so we can be together and work in order to uh, facilitate the growth of African digital literature. The page is on the Facebook. You can subscribe to it. That's why I give us the link there. Subscribe. I, w uh, I want to formally tell you that Wolere Tambura will be working with me in, the, in this organization so that we'll collect, we'll collect more of works in Mali <laughs> and the other side. Another project is the end of all corruption. That is my future plan now. I, which I have already programmed this one. You know, I'm a Christian. And then the concept of hellfire is, is also believed in Christian, even in Muslim, right? Uh -huh. So it, it's hell that inspired me to create the end of all corruption. So I will, it's on my system. How I wish is, yeah, it's apocalyptic. Literature. So, I don't know 
how we will do that for certain projection. Otherwise, I could have demonstrated for you how. No, there is not in that slide. But that's what I want to do. Next, I next pro, uh, next pro project. I want to do what we call a virtual reality or ag augmented uh, reality or extended reality, virtual reality poetry. That's, that's what I want to do. Where, by which, that we, call, we call that kind of reading, immersive reading, or immersive poetry. That's why I'm targeting. By the time you see the 3D, when you're reading the text, and you wear the glass, that lens, you will see how the text, and how my village will be so visible for you as if you are in the village. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. So, this, okay, this is, so this is a, this is a website, please. These are the important websites that you need. Uh, I would like to thank Center for Digital Humanities, University of Lagos, for inviting me to project, to share my project with her. I thank Professor Opebi. Uh, I thank also Assistant Professor Richard Aja that has introduced me into DH. Without him, I couldn't do that. Uh, I have to thank Dr. Alex Jill of the University of Columbia. You know, Alex, sometimes he has to tell me that. He said, you, you have to be independent. That's why I'm teaching you all this so that you can go and be independent. Why? You must, by now, you must be independent. <laughs> but I keep on disturbing him if I don't understand something. He will quickly answer me and tell me that, okay, I don't want you to chat with me on Facebook. Send whatever you want to send to me via my email. I will reply to you. Always open to help, ready to help. He has helped me a lot. Uh, I want to thank Jim Andrews. Jim Andrews, a Canadian uh, veteran visual poet, poet and also electronic literature poet. Now, uh, he, he believed in me. And he's, he is the one that reviewed my my first, poet, first publication of e-poetry. And when he, he said that you are the second African digital poet I met. They, he, then he referred me to one man that has been practicing it since 2001, called Christopher Breen. But he said he has this kind of problem, bipolar or what, whatever. So he doesn't want to, if, in fact, he is identifying himself with his condition. So in all his work, you will not see his real name. It's only Christopher and that bipolar. So I contacted him, but he didn't reply to me. So his work, he has his website. I have to go because there is what we call Adobe Flash. Adobe Flash has gone into extinction from January this year because it, has, it is a tool to create literature electronic literature, but because the, the company, somebody programmed one play, and the play was violent, and they sued the company to the, to the court, and that's how they asked him that they should stop using, the, uh, using his tool. <laughs> using their tool, that's why they stopped it. Uh, but I discover, I have to, I'm the one that even told uh, uh, electronic literature organization that Adobe is still working. I discover a browser that when you install, still read Adobe Flash. So I have to post it to our organization. And many people have benefited from that and they will continue to play even if even the company is not yet so is no more supporting it. But other programmers have integrated it into their browser and they're still working on that. I, I want to thank Leonardo Flores, the president of electronic literature, he has helped me very well. And then distinguished professor Dini Griga, 
Washington State University, United States of America. She, when, when I said that, okay, I was working, I was doing project and my computer crashed. So I like posted on Facebook, oh, my computer crashed. So that's why she sent me this computer. Last year, yeah. <laughs> now, Kathleen Fisher, Kathleen Fisher is the vice president of ELO. She, 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 she's one of the people that is sponsoring my database. And then uh, Alan Beglow and the rest. Now, the two persons that are involved in launching my website, they are from the University of Winona, United States of America. Uh, that is Devin Heckman and then Patrick Litchie. I thank them because one will host the website, another one has paid for the name of the website. Thank you very much. I, will, I would like to say something. You see, please, after this, just learn what you can learn. What you don't like, if you don't like programming, if you don't want to learn and you don't like it, there are many other sides of DH, like critical code studies, where you, you learn how to read code, but not to code. Yes, you learn, how to, you learn how to read code and tell them that this code is biased. Yes, like Sadia, or what, what's her name, from America, she, she was criticizing Gogu for, for racism against Africa. If you, if, yeah, if you type black woman, the first thing you see maybe is half-naked woman and a woman that is like, you know, the image is no good about. So she has to tell Google, and she, she did her research and told Google that Google rearrange your algorithm because your algorithm is racism, is racist. So, you know, this is what? DH. It's part of DH. So I told you that all this creation that I do, I'm not a coder, I'm not a programmer. But when I look at the code, I know, okay, if I put my text here, I will see the anim uh, animation. So you do it, but sometimes you have to reference the person that coded it in your work. Thank you very much. Please, a round of applause. You know why I say you should uh, clap uh, uh, our young man? It's because this one, our technical crew, they are not hypertensive or hypotensive. If it is, we are using visuals. Before you know it, uh -huh, so we are live here. The voice of that one will be. Uh -huh, so it's good. My dear, it, the sound is better now, very good. Don't worry, I think it is going to be better and better. Let's put a, uh, a round of applause for <laughs> Joanna Waliha. Actually, I think it was 2017 uh, when uh, I. So, uh, yes. I. You can be a DH specialist like that. You can ask a DH understand. Like now to work on now. I have tied to the work dancing in the sun 
from this literature. That okay, one, two, any other? Is there no, no few voice? Uh, actually, uh, And I have lines in already read. An example. Actually, uh, my I have I have also a collection of poems that I have written in French. I published it in 2014, I think. Right? Now I have to digitize one. I have to uh, I mean convert it into digital to be digital born. And I call that poetry um, a letter to the United Nations. Now, what happened? Uh, just go to the next place, the next slide, one project. Uh, click on um, cyber point. No. Up, up, please, up. Go back, back, please. Okay. For activism, uh, uh, this is this is le yes letter to Union Africa uh, African that is uh, African Union. Click on that place. Most of my work is written in two lang uh, lang uh, uh, they are written in two languages: French, English, French, English. So that's why you see trotol uh, trotology and uh, veritology. Zeus, Jesus above Christ with Zeus. So, click. Please, you have the slide. Okay, now let me tell you. I, I say they've come for our own treasure. And in o okay, to, to, 
the United Nations, right? Now, now this to United to this to United Nation. This to United Nation. Here is a revolt kind of aspect of poetry. You cannot read this because the text is very fast. If, but how do you read it? You control it by reading the verse, clicking on the verse. When you click on the verse, it will slow down. The verse will slow down and you will read it. I was writing this to the United Nations telling them that they justify Bush killing Iraqis. Iraqis. But Lauren Barbo, because he also committed the same offense that the Bush, they, they, they what? They lock or incarcerate Lauren Barbo, but the Bush is still free. Which among them does not kill, pe kill people? So, but the United Nations would justify one for killing and hold one ransom for killing. So I say I don't support justice, injustice. And let everybody be equal before the law. That's, what I, that's all about that. But when you go back, first I, I narrated how they come from our own treasure in order, to, for the, in order for them to get their own pleasure. They, carry our, they come with cargo in order to, to stop our ego. Now and make us to be people without, uh, like we see ourselves as people that are without, I forgot the, the this in the poem. So, what we, what we see is that you can convert your own. But one thing I want to tell you is that what are the emotions that are inside the work? Because that's what will inspire your animation. So, if there is something like that, you know, colors also is part of it. Do you know that this, this is a cube? This that's a, that is a, that is a plane here. It's cube. But do you know what I do? I use color, black, to hide the main cube. The cube. Do you understand? Now, things will be dancing. But these things, they are inside. So, you are only seeing text dancing. But I use color. That's why I... I have to I'm, I I have to be creative so that someone will not see cube. I want the person see cube. The person may not be interested in it, in reading it. He says, uh, oh, you copy somebody's code. It's somebody that I copy, but I hide the code. <laughs> um, let me put uh, make two comments uh, uh, Habib digitizing or rewritten poetry can take the different approaches it depends on what you want to achieve just like we digitize um, uh, I think um, uh, James talked about um, uh, what do you call is it uh, uh, liter literature uh, literature, uh -huh. literature. That means there are letters that were written in colonial days. Uh -huh. So James' idea is that we can also digitize them and be able to read them. It can on that you can do that by migrating the words to to the digital. That's one aspect. You can. As we work on the emotion, that aspect, you can, can introduce pictographs into them. That's another aspect. You can give them more 
multimodality. That's another aspect. So there are different aspects you can actually undertake. I don't want us to look at the DH as being stereotypical. It's not just one aspect. Uh -huh. Before, it was just the mode, text. But now it can be multimodal, introducing visuals. We did a one, uh, uh, James, there was a one you did on, uh, in Netherlands. I think we showed that one. There was a, uh, you were doing your birthday. I don't, I can't correlate. Yeah, hey, it, it, uh, yes, it did. Music and it, it was a form. It, that was three. Permit me to see your girl Ali at this time. And because um, I'm, I'm very, very, let me say, excited or dazed by your presentation. Um, and I will say it, okay, I'm not going to pay, but you have a student in me. <laughs> Okay, so having said that, I was just wondering that um, perhaps you may have to put a caveat in some of these um, animated poetry um, for your viewers or for your audience. Because, you know, I think even when you want to have photograph, flash, flash photograph is a warning. Because someone who is, uh, I don't know the term they use for it, uh, yeah, yeah, um, can find this offensive. Yet, the person is interested in your work, but uh, this will be so offensive, and then, of course, nobody can charge you for that, but it makes, it makes you, um, um, yeah, yes, that's the word. Epileptic people like that, they wouldn't be able to read it. They, in fact, they can faint after reading in this, this, you know? So you can put something like that, a caveat on your stuff that so, so, so people, can, there is flash photography or something, 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 something. I know there are things for it. So, so, just to, um, that um, we also like to do it. You are saying, so. It. Speak of forest as prostate access. Uh, the afternoon. Uh, of reading. The time you spend something like that, you read before. Eh? If you are not careful and go back and reread, you will not even get what you read the first time because the links are many. So, and that also aspect is what uh, Astrid, Astrid Essien said that is called, she introduced it as what we call the aesthetic of revisitation and revision. Okay? So, is part of the style and aesthetic in the digital, digital poetry. Okay? So, but your word, you are inspiring me to give, uh, to give instruction is quietly okay because we want also people, as they're reading our work, let them be healthy. Right? So because we need them to be, keeping, we need to be entertained them every time and also send our message to them. Thank you very much for the correction, sir. Thank you so much. I so much enjoyed the, your presentation. I want to say that it's very, 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 very uh, let me use this word, quote unquote, very sweet. <laughs> quote unquote. No, but I, I could relate with several things you did. And uh, there's this particular one I'm trying to get many at all. And, I be, and I'm, a, I'm a bit lost. That Pope loses hope. Now, I saw this endless streaming yes. of your poet. Yes. Then I, I, I began, that time I was asking myself, to what end? Now, two things. This e poetry that you are into, now, consider me a student like James said anyway. <laughs> now, this, this, e, this e poetry, is it just for presentation alone or both presentation and analysis is actually on that end i could i'm actually asking my question to what end okay. 
Thank you very much. Uh, there is what we call distant writing and generative literature. As long as that poem is playing, it will not stop. That's, you know, I, I explained in my presentation that it is looping. Right? But you know that in my code, some of the tests are recessive. Whereas others are dominant. Right? The one that later, they, as, they, as it's generating, later the one that is recessive will be what? Dominant. And like, likewise, in our life, there's a time we are energetic and hopeful. And there's a time we are downcast. You see where the analysis is coming? Just you manifest it in the play of the um, poetry. Now, when you come to analysis, there is analysis of that. Now, let me tell you another secret of dealing with coding. You know, all this code, when you go on your own browser, you right click, you see the source code. Create source code. All the code will be displayed and even the text by, its, by itself. You understand? It's another way for you to read it, close reading, from the back side instead of the front side of the web. Do you understand? Then when you get the meaning from the close reading, then before you employ the other electronic literature reading. Do you understand? Have I answered your question? Now, to what end? What do you mean to what end? To what extent? Huh? Thank you. You know that literature is doing how many things? Entertainment? Info information? Educating? So I know that aesthetic is part of the education. And even criticizing. Do you understand? So, you are the one that will define meaning. I write, that's what uh, Bert will say, eh? the death of the writer. So as I already released my work, you are the one to interpret it anyhow you want. Because I, the de uh, this guy said, uh, Bert, or something, Lorna Bert said, what? Death of the, uh, in the text, the auto is what? Is dead. Do you, it's not only presentation. You can criticize. You can do anything you want to do. Okay. Okay, thank you, my brother, for this uh, brilliant presentation. Uh, you have been funny and uh, serious at the same time. <laughs> okay, my question is, uh, I just want to know um, about uh, how did you get your, uh, uh, how, how did your project get uh, sponsored? I want, me, I want you to tell me how your project got founded. So how did you proceed? Yeah, I, because if I have a project, how can I get pro a sponsor? That's my question. Okay, uh, none of my work is being sponsored as per se. Do you understand? But I get relationship with friends. That's why we talk about networking. Do you know what networking will do for you? What you pay for 100,000 naira, you get it free. Do you, do you understand? In academic and in artistic work, if you are not doing networking, when I see some people, you are coming from the same country or the same city, you are always together gluing to, uh, to your own people and be in the same place. And you are not socializing. You are not, making, you are not contacting other people from different places that you come from. You, are not progress, you will not progress in academic. 
Because even people that will get interest in your in reading your work, there are the people that you are afraid so. But when they come for critic, they will criticize as if they have, they have never met you before. <laughs> Do you understand? That's how academic work is. So, individually, individually, people used to meet me and say, Kai, your work is this. Thing. They say, I will send you such an amount of money. Do you understand now? Now, when you, if, they, if there is any funding, you see, they will, say, they will tell me, so, so, please, there is a funding who will apply, apply. That's how it works. Thank you. Thank you so much. The way it has been working, uh, we want to thank uh, the writer and the, the tweet writer. How do you call it, my brother, before I break my tongue? Tweet uh -huh, Tweet ratio. Uh -huh. Please. I have told you that making, I think the, the challenge now is that we have not actually had a lot of uh, critics of DH. I want us to understand that we can engage. I have told you I'm going to be a very strong critic. I belong in Roland Bart that believe that the author is dead when his work is published. So I'm going to criticize him without minding he's my disciple. <laughs> so we, I want you to understand that this program is two in one. It's a double barrel, two in one. Summer school and then the international conference or uh, the first international conference we wanted to bridge the gap between theory and practice okay now for the past four days or five days we've been we've been listening to theoretical teaching and and the you know um information education and so on and so forth but between now uh between now and afternoon, we have two sessions, okay? So we are going to have some experts that are going to present papers. They will present papers on areas related to what we have been talking about. Uh, those who have done some work in DH, uh, so they will, be, they will be presenting their papers from different parts of the world. So we are going to connect with them. And so please, we want to encourage you to please participate actively and ask questions. We have three, three panels this morning. Three panels, and um, I think they will display. Uh, James, can you display, the, can you display the something so that they will see? Uh, so you, you, you may decide to choose any of the sessions you want to attend, the one that connects with your area of research, and then so that you can listen to uh, those experts presenting their papers, and then you ask questions, and you engage them. That's the beauty of uh, this kind of interaction and, and this kind of forum. So, so that we can also learn from others and then you can get to know them as well. Thank you. Thank you. Let's put a round of applause. Just a round of applause for our, our convener. Without his efforts, you could have still been in Senegal, my friend. <laughs> so that is the beauty of it. We Remember we have made a lot of, we are making, some of you have been asking questions. You can't come to Lagos without seeing Lagos. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that, uh, yes, you can't come to Lagos without seeing Lagos. But I told you they don't wake up people to Lagos. You are only reminded that this is Lagos. <laughs> I hope you know that. <laughs> so we are making, uh, Ashtu, we are making some arrangement. Uh -huh. So once we have perfected it, we'll be able to tell you how we will move. Mm. Mm. It's not for it's not for some people. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's all right. So we are going to do um, uh, once the the conference starts, we are expected to join all because a lot of people are going to present their papers. Some from India, some from different places. And so you will join in the in the panels as we have three panels rolled out uh, together. They are parallel sessions. Uh -huh. So we will just round it up and then be able to, to go over to. Mm. We are also, yes, we, we are also going to take your take photograph according to your 
a country of, of uh, participation. So the people from um, uh, Mali will take your photograph. Uh, Prof, I hope the one we took, because the VC had told me that I should tell you that we need... <laughs> you. Okay. Uh -huh. So, uh, can, uh, the, the grandchildren of Povia, you stay in one place. Uh -huh. Then the other... Mm? Uh, you, you stay in one place. Then the... the um, uh, my friends from Mali, take another place. I uh have -huh. my Senegalese. I uh have -huh. uh -huh. you sit another place. So we are going to take it, arrange it. Where's the photographer? Maybe we'll be doing it one after the other. So that we will not even notice. If I call, where, where is he? Uh -huh. So we take you. Because, yes, has it come? Okay. So there is, oui, le Sénégalais? Okay, come. It's better we use the okay, You won't be able to move back. To move back. Have you finished? 